how do you select whether your back has gone inside this or not? So the transformed E. coli culture is then allowed to grow in suitable selection medium with XGAL because back contains beta galactosidase gene in the cloning site. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, back has a beta galactosidase gene. Okay, lag Z gene. Uh, and I wanted to talk something about, I'm not going to into detail, but alpha complementation. You should know this term. Alpha complementation is nothing but I've told you about this host, right? Just listen carefully, you'll understand. This host has a chromosomal DNA, correct? This is already present in the host cell. This chromosomal DNA is the one that produces the alpha part of beta galactosidase enzyme. Okay, this beta galactosidase enzyme basically is formed out of two parts, alpha and beta. Okay, so the alpha part is synthesized by chromosomal DNA and the beta part will be uh, synthesized by back provided there is no gene. For example, there was no uh, uh, fragment of DNA. Suppose this was just original back without recombinant. This will go inside because it has the lag Z gene intact. It will produce the beta form. And when alpha and beta form combine, you will get the functional beta galactosidase enzyme. So what will these do? If you have the functional beta galactosidase enzyme, this will go grow in the media. It will break down the XGAL present and you will get blue colonies. Okay. But what is happening is this gene has been destroyed. So chromosomal DNA is producing the alpha part, but your plasmid is not able to produce vector or back is not able to produce the beta part. You will not get the beta galactosidase enzyme, functional beta galactosidase enzyme. So when this grows in the media, it is not able to break the XGAL present in the media and it will give you a white colony. This I'll put it up again in the next slide so that it becomes clear, but please be, um, you know, please know about this alpha complementation. You might get it in some um, exams or something. You know, what is alpha complementation? So you should know what it is. Now, along with uh, your XGAL, this media, growth media also has something called IPTG, isopropyl beta D1 thiogalactopyranocyte. Okay. It is used along with XGAL for blue white screening. Now, what does this IPTG do? I'll read it out and explain it to you. IPTG is a non-metabolizable analog of allolactose that induces the expression of lag Z gene. Vietnam is soaring, everything is going overhead. In simple terms, in the media, why will a bacteria or why will anything produce a certain kind of enzyme? Whenever it has to break something, if beta galactosidase enzyme will be broken down, if there is some substrate present over here which needs that enzyme to work on it, right? For example, um, you are going to eat food, okay? You take your first uh, bite of food. What will happen? Your brain gets some signals. Okay, food is going inside, you know. Uh, Sheena is chewing the food. The next, it will reach your tummy. Already there are some enzymes in your mouth, in your saliva. But once, you, sometimes even when you think about food and you are, you know, uh, getting saliva in your mouth, it says this all will happen. Your brain is understanding, oh, food is coming. What will it do? It will induce the release of digestive enzymes, correct? You have digestive inside, enzymes inside your stomach. So once food is going inside, brain is getting signal that food is going. So I need to produce certain enzymes or uh, digestive juices so that it is digested in the stomach. Same way, IPTG, what it does is, it is a non-metabolizable. Non-metabolizable means it cannot be broken down. Broken down. Analog means similar to allolactose. So allolactose is the actual food or actual uh, material that induces the expression of lag Z gene. Or it tells if allolactose is present in the media, it will tell the bacteria, okay, you need to produce beta galactosidase enzyme to break me down. Okay, so. Instead of that, we use IPTG, which is very similar to allolactose. Okay, so if IPTG is present in this media, this host bacteria will get a signal, okay, I have to produce beta galactosidase. If I have to produce beta galactosidase, this plasmid has to be expressed again and again. Okay. Now, why are we using IPTG? Because it is non-metabolizable. It cannot be broken down. So it should be noted that IPTG is not a substrate for beta galactosidase, but only an inducer. So what will happen is, if you use allolactose, uh, your enzyme is produced, it will break down allolactose and give you the products, correct? Uh, but if 
IPTG is present, it will not be broken down. It will uh, again and again. It will be there in the media. Okay. Okay. Someone has come in. Please mute mute your video, guys. Yeah, sorry for the interruption, guys. So as I was telling, if IPTG is there, it is not broken down. So bacteria gets again and again signal that you know IPTG is still there in the media. Make more and more of beta galactosidase. So in the process of making beta galactosidase, what will happen? This will keep on making multiple copies. But what is happening? We don't have lags that functional. Beta galactosidase enzyme won't be produced by the those who are having a clone. But multiple copies of a genome of interest will keep on pr getting produced. Okay. So uh, there are three things that can happen. You have your plasmid vector and your foreign DNA. When you clone it, first cases you will get the foreign dna into the gene of interest you will i mean into the cloning site breaking the lag z correct recombinant is formed at that time you will put it into the bacteria the bacteria when it grows inside the media with the exgal and iptg it will not have beta galactosidase so it will not convert the exgal into any other compound and so you will get white colonies Second case is this foreign DNA is inserted, but at a wrong place. Okay, not inside your cloning site. At that time, what will happen uh, when your bacteria is getting multiplied? It will keep on producing beta galactosidase, and you will get blue colonies. Okay. Third thing is there was no insertion itself. You know, this uh, colony got. I mean, sorry, this vector got ligated without any foreign DNA. At that time, also, what will happen? Lag Z gene is intact, no problem to it, so it will keep on replicating. Okay, and you will have blue colonies. Now, what is the chemistry behind this blue and white? We'll see in the next slide. Um, we have told that exgal is there. So, if beta galactosidase is produced, exgal is hydrolyzed to form 5 bromo 4 chloro indoxyl, which spontaneously dimerizes to produce an insoluble blue pigment called 5 5 dibromo 4 4 dichloro indigo. That is what is the reaction that is happening. Whenever beta galactosidase is breaking down X gal, na, this product is formed. Uh, you know rainbow, right? Rainbow, lo, what are the colors? You know Vibgyor, V, I, B. So that what is that I? That is indigo. Indigo is that slight blue color present in rainbow. So you can see indigo over here, right? So the same color compound is formed. That's why any uh, clone that is not having the uh, gene of interest will give you blue. So which one do we require? Which is our recombinant one? Blue or white? The ones that are white in color. They will have our recombinant DNA of interest. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, the colonies formed by the non-recombinant cell therefore appear blue. So that is what I am saying. Non-recombinant in the blue irko, while the recombinant ones will appear white. So the desired recombinant colonies can be easily picked up and cultured. White color colonies are selected and screened for the presence of particular gene. Then the colonies are labeled and grown in micro tighter dishes. This is a micro tighter dishes. So there are a whole circle, means well circle. Okay, so in that you will label each gene and you will grow it in that. And that, since they are placed according to the order of the gene in the genome from phi dash end with the gene tag, they are known as back library. So this is called your back library. Okay, you get multiple colonies, you select your white colonies, you tag it, you name it, you grow it into a microtiter plate, okay, and then you get an ordered back library.